How about a challenge using the live start feature in Out of the Park Baseball 25? The trade deadline has just passed and the Chicago White Sox are on pace to lose more games than any Major League Baseball team since the dawn of the 20th century. And I'm here for it. In fact, I'd like a hand in making it happen. In the game, I'm the manager of the White Sox, but what I'll really be doing is managing against them for the remaining 52 games. Most of the in-game decisions will be left to the AI, but I'm controlling the other team's lineups and substitutions. If I can countermanage the White Sox to 121 losses, I'm a winner. If they finish 42 and 120 or better, then I'm the loser. So let's make it happen. Brady Singer's in a jam, I'm sticking with him and Nick Senzel makes me pay for it. White Sox win 8-3. This version of Chris Getz wised up quickly and realized half this roster is trash. Lots of new blood coming to the big leagues, along with the return of Yoan Mankata. Joe Ryan got the Sox back to their losing ways, striking out 12 in a complete game effort. But Garrett Crochet shut us down the day after. And how did Yoan Mankata hit two home runs without straining something? Now we're on the verge of another White Sox win, but it's a three-run walk-off homer for Royce Lewis off Nick Vespi. Now we're in Oakland, up one to nothing in the bottom of the ninth. It's Joe Boyle against Luis Robert, and we struck him out. Andrew Vaughn and Luis Robert destroyed us in the middle game. White Sox win 9-3 and are playing 500 balls since the challenge began. We're down again in the third inning. Brent Rooker sends one high and off the wall, and this one will tie the game. Wait, he's going all the way, and it's an inside-the-park homer for Brent Rooker. A's win 4-2. The Cubs had this game won, but Patrick Wisdom's error let the tying run score. Then we walked in the winning run in the 11th. Tyson Miller got the Cubs some revenge the next day, getting Rafael Ortega to pop out for the save. The Bronx Bombers marched into town and promptly got shut out by Mike Clevenger. Because that's normal. It's another loss, 12-4. to And 20 hits for the White Sox? That's how many they average in a week. Alex Verdugo helped the Yankees salvage a game with a three-run bomb to center. Yanks win 8-3. Garrett Crochet surrendered a three-run homer, and the White Sox only mustered three hits in their 90th loss of the season. The Astros stranded 10 runners, but not these two, thanks to this two-out, two-run double by Jake Myers off Jonathan Cannon. Sox lose 3-2, their third straight. But the streak ended there. Somehow, Mike Clevenger and the bullpen only allowed a single run to the Astros. This is not how the White Sox will lose 121 games, with Luis Robert claiming a Player of the Week award. Isn't he due to get injured by now? That might be our only chance. The only Sox hit of the game was this homer by Andrew Vaughn, and they're back in the loss column. Make it two in a row for the Giants as Mike Soroka falls to 1-12 on the season. Andrew Vaughn's up in the bottom of the ninth looking to avoid the sweep. Nope, we finally got one. Miguel Vargas stopped the losing streak at three by driving in three against the Tigers. When Seal Perez hit his second homer of the game in the 11th inning off Nick Vespa to put the Sox back in the loss column. Jake Rogers gave the Tigers another win with a two-run homer off Davis Martin in the sixth. And Kenta Maeda clinched the series win for the Tigers with a complete game. Corey Seager extended the losing streak to four with two homers off Garrett Crochet. The Sox mounted an insane comeback from 10 to nothing down, but David Robertson struck out Miguel Vargas to kill the rally and extend the losing streak to five. But OP Mike Clevenger stopped the streak there with eight innings of one run ball. John Brebbia and Davis Martin usher in a new losing streak by getting hammered by the Mets 13-6. That's 100 losses for the White Sox. The Mets only collected three stinking hits the next game, and this wasn't one of them. Sox win 4-zip. That concludes a 9-17 August record for the White Sox, which comes out to a 346 winning percentage. Not very good, but not nearly bad enough to win this challenge. They need to go 4-21, and 21, or worse, for a successful challenge now. Luis Robert, Yoan Mancada, and Miguel Vargas are playing too far above replacement level for us to hit our winning percentage target. I'm also disappointed that this AI won't give Andrew Benatendi more playing time. 
We've got a similar story with the pitching staff. Mike Clevenger is pitching out of his mind. Four of the five Chicago White Sox starters are performing well above replacement, which just doesn't work for this challenge. The rubber match against the Mets went extras. Edgar Cuero struck out in the 11th with a tying run at third base. Craig Kimbrell delivered a 7-out save in the series opener with Baltimore. Cy Clevenger throws 7 shutout innings again, but Calvin Fouché gets into a huge jam in the 9th, but Ryan O'Hearn grounds out to end the game. But the Orioles can hit Davis Martin and take the rubber match by the score of 5-3. The Sox got abused by Willier Abreu in the series opening 9-4 loss in Boston, Kudos to Boston on getting a tie in their record. But Garrett Crochet struck out 10 over 8 shutout innings the next day, leaving the White Sox only 3 wins away from preventing history. Yohan Moncada's attempt at heroism fell short on this 4-6-3 double play in the ninth inning, allowing the Red Sox to take the series. The opener against Cleveland was a tight one. Dominic Fletcher flew out against closer Emmanuel Classe to end the game. Davis Martin held the Guardians in check in the second game and got Kyle Manzardo on strikes to end the eighth, leading to a White Sox 5-3 win. Steve Kwan's three-run homer put the Guardians in front of the rubber match and the Sox comeback fell short 5-4. Mike Spence then pitched six strong innings as the Athletics shut out the Sox on four hits. The following day, Vince Velasquez and the White Sox bullpen shut the A's out on three hits for a one to nothing win. The White Sox magic number is now one. Their next win is number 42, so we have to defeat them in 13 straight games to succeed. But hey, they've already had two 14 game losing streaks this season, it's possible. We brought closer Mason Miller in to escape the fourth inning and it didn't work. The three run lead was more than enough. This time it's a four hit shutout led by none other than Mike Clevenger. So we have failed miserably. The White Sox went 15 and 25 against us for a whopping 375 winning percentage when we needed to hold them to 253 or worse. The schedule wasn't going to help us out much either as nine of their remaining 12 games were against sub 500 teams. Luis Robert and Rafael Ortega helped the Sox generate just enough offense in September to carry them through a lot of games. And it was enough because Garrett Crochet was his ace self and I don't know what kind of concoction Vince Velasquez and Mike Clevenger were taking in September to put up those numbers. Well, better luck to me next time, I guess. Or maybe it was a skill issue. Let me know if you think that was the case. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button if you'd like to be notified of more videos as they come out. And leave a comment on what you thought about this one or what you'd like to see in my future videos. Otherwise, I'll see you for the next one.